in West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Are your feet smoother from that thing today? Fuck yeah. He's, he cursed on Coffee Talk. <laughs> I never do. They are, right? That snaggle toe piece you had is gone. Huh? Oh, that's funny. Hello, everybody, 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 everybody. Bianca, you're supposed to be sleeping. Forty ers beat the Packers. Woo woo. Oh, now do we know who's going to the playoffs? Hi guys. It's court. Um, really quick, I just wanted to come on before I passed out. Um I am in Philadelphia for the weekend. As you guys know, I was speaking tonight um, at the Superhero Project um, fundraiser that raises money for families who have babies in the NICU. And um, and um, Courtney was my date. And we had a great time in Philly. And guys, I have to tell you something. You're not going to want to hear this, but this is real. And I know you're going to be mad at me. And that's okay. We don't have to agree all the time. And you don't always have to agree with me or like everything I say. But this shit is the truth. Philadelphia has handled COVID literally better than any city I've been to. And that's saying a lot. Philadelphia is not understaffed. There, Everybody goes to work in Philadelphia. Everybody goes to work. The rules are very strict here. Even Now, I'm a COVID, y'all know I've always been like very COVID conscious. I was, got vaccinated as soon as I could. I got my booster as soon as I could. I wear my mask, I wash my hands. I do all the things, right? Philly's even more extreme. Philly's like the most extreme city when it comes to COVID. You have to have a mask on every single place you go. And even if you pull your mask down in Whole Foods to drink, talk, they say, excuse me, I need you to pull your mask back up. You can't even pull it down to talk to someone at Whole Foods. And let me tell you something. You know how everybody wants to tell you? And nobody's working in America. Nobody's going to work, right? Uh, not true in Philly. Everybody's working in Philly. Every store Courtney and I went into, and we went into a lot, they were full of um, full of employees. So I'm just saying, I want to give a shout out to Philly. It's cold as brick here, but it really is the city of love. And I'm very proud of this city, and I think they've done an amazing, amazing job. Back to the NICU. Um, so I, I came to speak for Kelly and Superhero Project. And I'm so grateful that she asked me to do it. And I'm so grateful that Courtney and I have had the opportunity to spend the whole weekend together and just enjoy Philadelphia and see it differently, by the way. Um, and... I, uh, I'm really great, very grateful for that because the truth is I didn't really know a lot about Philly, even though I grew up in Jersey. Um, I didn't really spend much time in Philly. Um, so, um, we really enjoyed Philadelphia, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, very clean city with a, so much history. If you can get to Philadelphia, you should. What did we see today? Independence Hall. In, uh, 
Yeah, we went to like. Um, we saw the Liberty Bell. Well, kind of. Independence Mall. In Independence Mall. But what were those three things we saw? Remember, we took pictures. Oh, the first congressional. We saw the hall. first congressional hall. Um, the first Supreme Court. Um, there's we're so much shit up. We're making shit up. But no, it was like, like it's old shit. It's old. It said used as the first Supreme Court. Right. We saw the second oldest bank in America. Um, obviously so many statues of like Ben Franklin and George Washington. There's so much history here. Kids would probably, um, love it here. Um, so I spoke at the event tonight and I think it went really, really well. And I hope that they raise a ton of money, but I wanted to just tell you, 53% of mothers who have children in the NICU experience PTSD. And I don't mean postpartum and I don't mean depression. I mean actual post-traumatic stress disorder. And I am one of them. I didn't know it at the time, but when I came home from the NICU and had to leave Charlie when I came home from the hospital and had to leave Charlie in the NICU, I came home to a house that I had not been in for five weeks. My children had a completely new routine. Michael had been the primary parent. I had to reacclimate to my own home with my own family. It was so traumatizing. Not to mention the fact that Charlie was in the NICU for two weeks and I had to go and pump and sit in a, a, a NICU and listen to beeping and babies crying and all this stuff for weeks. Um, but then they send you home. Um, um, Jennifer Gorman, uh, I'm not insane. And, um, I'm telling you that I spent two days walking around the city of Philadelphia and it was clean and it was safe and it was beautiful. And if you don't like it, um, you don't have to come back so easy and no I'm not insane um, and I just want to oh my the most important thing I want to say to other NICU moms is <clears throat> coming home from the NICU is the easy part when you come home there's all this like age correcting and math you have to do and your child's not hitting milestones at the right time and you're trying to figure out if they're on target for their corrected age or their actual age or whatever. And everything makes you nervous and you're still traumatized by a birth story that you haven't written down and a baby book that's not complete and baby pictures that you don't really want to share because your child has tubes everywhere and tape and things and And I didn't realize, but the running joke around my house for a very long time was that I never put Charlie down. I never let anybody else hold her for the first year of her life. Michael um, jokes about it now, and I know that it hurt him that I didn't let him hold her, but I couldn't, it was like, I had this crazy, crazy, like fear. I, I can't explain it. It wasn't that I thought he would do anything to her. I just lived in fear that she would die, even though my mind knew she wouldn't. I just had a subconscious fear. I never put Charlie down. I carried her in my arms everywhere the first year of her life, and I didn't let anybody hold her. And I now understand that that was a trauma response to what we had been through together. And I just want any other NICU mother to know that if you had PTSD, if you did things with your NICU baby that you didn't do with your other children, and you're looking back at like, God, I didn't do her baby book. I didn't do his, I didn't print out a lot of pictures. I didn't, whatever. Um, I just want to tell you that you're not alone. And if you look back even now, 11 years later, and you're like, what was that? What even was that experience? Like, what the hell was that? You are not alone. Because I do it too. And 
I tried to be funny tonight when I spoke so that I wouldn't cry because it's so hard for me. It's so triggering for me and I compartmentalized it. And Charlie's 11 now, so I feel silly crying about it because she's healthy and she's happy and she's in fifth grade, you know, and she eats Doritos and does cartwheels. So it's like, how can you cry about something when your child is fine? But it's because of the incident. It's because of the situation that I went through that I compartmentalized and I just did not process it and I did not talk about it. So... It was an honor tonight to get the opportunity to talk about it. Um, Courtney said I did great. I was just glad I didn't cry. So great. Um, but I hope that we raised a lot of money for families in the NICU. You can check out the Superhero Project online. And I know, Danielle, right? Okay, every NICU mom is saying the same thing. No, they didn't let anyone touch their babies. It's so weird. It's so weird. But I just, you just can't. <laughs> I just can't touch my baby. Um, anyway, I love you guys, and I'm glad I got to check in with you. It's late, and I'm flying home tomorrow. Olivia is, uh, her birthday's on Monday. She'll be 14, so I need to be home. Um... Yes, what was that? Oh my gosh, Jennifer, I am the queen of that. I'm like, what was that? What was that experience? What even was that? What was that? Not to mention how traumatizing it is to be hemorrhaging, have an emergency C-section. They take your baby away. You don't get to hold her, see her. Whatever, the whole birth was traumatic. And I didn't even get to focus on how traumatic it was because I had to focus on Charlie. Crazy. Anyway, I love you guys. And I hope that you have um, a great night. And I will see you tomorrow.